Teaching Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. So let's get to the JVM. That's what people are mostly interested here, the JVM and the uh, application-specific configurations. So with the JVM, we have a just-in-time compiler. Typically, that's going to be the sun's hotspot uh, virtual machine. And when you have a 32-bit system, this is going to default to what's known as their client compiler. This is a compiler that's optimized for a smaller footprint. If you have a larger system, say two processors that's 64-bit, um, has over 2 gigabytes of RAM, then what you're going to be looking at is using the server compiler. This is optimized for a larger footprint. In addition to the compiler, we have the heap to consider. So the heap is where all of your objects and metadata about the classes and objects are stored. If you have a 32-bit system, the max size, the theoretical max size is a little bit bigger, but the real uh, max size that you can usually have for your heap is around 1.4 gigabytes, and that varies. And that really depends on how many um, other things you have going on in your system. So why would we want smaller or larger heaps? Well, obviously, if we have a larger heap, we can store more objects, and we don't run the risk of uh, dealing with out-of-memory uh, exceptions and things like that. Unfortunately, larger heaps can also take longer to garbage collect. So there's a lot of give and take whenever you're dealing with uh, performance measurements and optimizations. So I want to talk a little bit about the heap so we understand exactly how this is organized. And this becomes more important as we look at garbage collection. Uh, garbage collection, we will see we have four different options for garbage collection. And uh, it will vary depending on how we want to treat these different areas of the heap. So the heap is organized into three main areas. This is the young generation the old generation, and the permanent generation. The old generation is sometimes known as the tenured generation, depending on the documentation that you use. So what is the young generation? This is where newly created objects are added. Um, this is a short-lived area. You'll see that there's um, a lot of spiking going on, a lot of object creation, and then a lot of uh, object deletion in this young generation area. It's short-lived. Uh, the garbage collector will run in this area typically more frequently than it will run in other areas of the heap. And it does contain a smaller footprint than other areas of the heap. The young generation is actually broken down then into um, a couple of other parts, three different sections. And these sections are kind of holding areas that will determine whether or not an object that's in the young generation should be tenured or promoted to the old generation. And so these sections are known as Eden, and then there are two survivor spaces. Um, again, when we start looking at uh, garbage collection visualization and the profile Profilers will see that these terms are used, so it's a good idea to understand exactly what they mean. The theory here is that uh, typically as you create objects, most of those objects are only going to be around for a short amount of time. And once you're done with those objects and no other reference is pointed to them, the garbage collector should come around and take care of them. The longer an object sticks around, the less likely it's going to be garbage collected. So that's when we think move things to the old generation. And so I say this is where the older objects go for some peace and quiet. That doesn't mean that the older objects are not used. They most certainly are used, method calls and field uh, settings and readings, and et cetera. Um, however, the garbage collector isn't going to bother it as much. The garbage collection is typically run in the old generation much uh, less frequently. In addition, the old generation has a much larger footprint than the young generation. Permanent generation is the third part. Um, if you're looking at any sort of profile tool, you'll see this as permgen, uh, typically. Permanent generation is a special area of the heap. It's actually pretty large. It's often typically larger than either the young or the old uh, generation areas. And the permanent generation is typically metadata about objects in the heap and classes. So if you do any reflection, for example, um, a lot of that information is coming from the permanent generation of the heap. So it's usually information about classes and methods. And in some cases, it would actually be the classes and methods themselves. You as a developer, when you are writing code, do not choose 
well, whether or not you're going to put some stuff inside of the uh, young, the old, or the permanent. The JVM, of course, takes care of that for you. However, depending on what measurements you start to take with your profiler, you might find that certain garbage collectors work better than others in terms of dealing with how your app is using these areas. So to visualize this a little bit, you can see uh, in the top here we've got a young generation area that's broken up into uh, two, three different parts, Eden, Survivor A, and Survivor B. Uh, again, all the objects that first get created will typically be put right into Eden. And after a couple of times that the garbage is collection, collected, uh, they might be moved into Survivor A or Survivor B. These survivor spaces are little holding grounds that say, you know, you've been around for a little bit. I recognize you, and you don't seem to be moving. Maybe, maybe you're good enough to move into the old generation space. So after a while, depending on the algorithm, things that are inside of Survivor A or Survivor B might be moved to the old generation. And there's actually some algorithms and situations where something in Eden might be directly moved to old generation as well. So the garbage collector. Why do we care about the garbage collector? In fact, for a lot of people, um, you know, one of the, the best features that they get excited about when they learn about using Java is the fact that um, garbage collection is handled for us. We don't really have to think about, well, I'm saying that with a caveat because we do have to think about, but we think that we don't have to worry about um, object creation, allocation, and uh, deletion. And this is in part true. So, for example, in the uh, C++ world where you have to uh, actively delete objects, uh, we run into two problems frequently. One would be we could have an object that's in the heap that would be deleted before all of the references pointing to that object uh, were deleted, meaning I just took something out of the heap, and now when I try to call a method on it, it's gone. It's been removed even though I didn't want to remove. Um, so that's one problem that we don't have uh, with uh, Java. Second problem would be if we got rid of all of the different references that were pointing to an object on the heap, well, now it would be a loitering object or a memory leak uh, where the object is taking up space on the heap, but nothing's pointing to it, so nothing can actually, um, uh, nothing can actually uh, reach it. And in that case, that's a problem that we don't have with the uh, Java virtual machine. So garbage collector does help us quite a bit. It manages the heap by removing dead objects, and really the garbage collector is also important. Uh, it'll deal with uh, defragmenting our garbage collection area, our heap. It'll deal with uh, allocation as well. So JDK6 uh, comes with four different garbage collectors. A lot of people don't know this. We don't have just one single garbage collector. There's four different ones that you can choose from. Each are optimized for different types of configurations. Now, regardless of which garbage collector the JDM selects for you or which one you decide to use um, explicitly, and I will talk about how to uh, do that in coming up in just a little bit, uh, most will employ what's known as a stop the world collection, meaning that if your application is running and the garbage collector has to run, then it's going to stop the application from running while it's processing doing the garbage collection. This is uh, much more noticeable in terms of performance when uh, you're using a single processor, um, a serial collector, which we'll examine in just a little bit too. So therefore, you need to be concerned about um, how frequently is that garbage collector uh, going to be run? And what kind of things are you doing in your code that might be affecting that? So we kind of want to limit the amount of large collection that can happen since that will affect performance. But of course, it's not always there's a single right answer. You also have to balance that with maybe you, your application requires a lot of objects to come and go. Um, in that case, maybe you, uh, you need it to run frequently. So again, it really depends on the type of performance goals that you set, the type of performance requirements. So each collector that I'm about to outline handles the different heap generations in a unique manner. As I just mentioned a little bit ago, too, the garbage collector is also responsible for defragmenting the heap. So think about it just like your uh, hard drive. Um, 
if you have a fragmented hard drive or a fragmented garbage collection area, a fragmented heap, um, it's going to take it a little bit longer to find areas to put new objects in. If everything is defragmented and compacted together, it knows right away, oh, here's the spot that I can uh, put this new object in, and so that will perform a little bit faster. So a fragmented heap can slow down object allocation and thus performance. But, of course, trade-offs and all of this stuff, uh, frequent and long defragmenting processes can also slow down performance as well. So what uh, kind of garbage collectors do we have? We have uh, four. The serial collector, the parallel collector, the parallel compaction collector, and the concurrent mark suite collector. Now these four that I'm talking about are in JDK6. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led .NET, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.